What's going on guys? Before we get into today's show, help me out here because our Steelers channel is trying to catch up in subs this month. We've got a nice AFC North battle, so if you haven't joined the Browns Report already, I don't know what you're waiting for. We've got free Browns news and rumors content, and if that's not good enough for you, if you're excited to have a better quarterback for the first time and I don't even want to say how long than the Pittsburgh Steelers, go ahead and smash that sub button. Welcome into the Cleveland Browns report by Chat Sports. We got the latest Browns news and rumors to talk about with you guys today. I know it's kind of that middle zone of free agency and NFL draft period, but there's still a lot buzzing out there. So coming up on today's show, the Browns, are they firmly in the mix for Jarvis Landry? We got a new report we'll touch on to start the show. Then after that, a potential new trade target. An interesting idea saw out there I want to throw to you guys. And then we'll wrap up the show by looking at where I think Genevieve Clowney will play in 2022. And make sure you stay tuned to all the way to the end because we're giving shout outs here because we are a man of the people here at the Browns Report. So. First story coming our way from Brad Stainbrook does a good job of covering the Browns. Tweeting out yesterday just after I posted the video saying, Browns remain in the mix for wide receiver Jarvis Landry. Nothing sounds close, but Cleveland remains in the picture. Well, that's got to be good news to at least still be in the picture because I kind of felt that Landry was out the door, right? But... Maybe we can try to lure Juice back to the lake. So let me ask this question because I think it's kind of the uh, nuts and bolts to this entire conversation. How much would you pay Jarvis Landry? Would he, He's going to want – I saw a fake – I think it's pretty sure a fake rumor out there that he wanted $20 million. He was supposed to make 16. He's not going to make $4 million more this season than what his contract had. But let me know in the comments how much you would pay Jarvis Landry. In order to set the table a little bit here – the Browns have about $20.8 million in cap space left. Now, they can't just go out and spend all of that in free agency today and tomorrow. They have to be able to pay their draft picks. So all those rookies, those contracts haven't been given out yet, but you know they're coming. So that's going to take up a little bit of change. Plus, teams like to save some money in the bank for an injury in the middle of the season, for example. If someone were to go down, like take Jack Conklin last year, right, when he went down for the season, if the Browns this year saw another offensive lineman go down and go, you know what, there's actually still some good tackles out on the street. Let's bring someone in for $1.2 million. Well, you want to have a million and change to go out and spend on someone just in case. So I think in order for the juice to come back, to the Browns, he'd have to take a little bit less money than maybe where he could get elsewhere. I, again, he ain't getting $20 million. If he's getting $20 million, I'm getting $10 million because he's just, unfortunately, not the same player in GM's eyes. He's 29, pushing 30, coming off a knee injury. Those aren't things a GM wants to hear and then give out $20 million. I'm guessing a team, maybe for example, the Kansas City Chiefs, who just lost Tyree Kill, maybe they would offer him something like, a one-year, $10 million contract. So then the Browns would say, hey, would you come back for one point, like for one year, 7.5? That would be the kind of gauge, I think, Landry could get elsewhere and what the Browns could offer him. Now, if you want to see Jarvis Landry come back to the dog pound and catch passes from Deshaun Watson because it wasn't like he was working with some previous Browns quarterbacks before Baker, but... It would be a whole lot more fun to see the guy who helped turn this program around, turn this franchise around, have a phenomenal quarterback to play with. I think he deserves it. So type 80 down below. You guys always show out for this one. So let's show Jarvis Landry some love in the comment section. Next up on today's show, should the Browns trade for LaVisca Chenault? LaVisca Chenault. The former Colorado Buffalo? Yeah, an interesting name that kind of fell out recently. Now, the Jaguars recently signed wide receivers Christian Kirk and Zay Jones in free agency, so where's the room for Visca? There's not a ton, it feels like. He's just a second-round pick from two years ago. The other good thing working for him is he's cheaper than Brandon Cooks. Brandon Cooks, I heard, was the Texans were asking for a second-round pick. When I did a Brandon Cooks mock trade two days ago, I had him going for a fourth-rounder. Very big difference between day three and day two right there, a fourth to a second. So, LaVisca Chanel, I'll give you a mock trade or an idea in a second, but what he's done the past two seasons in Jacksonville, sure, those aren't the numbers you'd like to see out of a second-round pick. Now, let's remember that he didn't have Trevor Lawrence in 2020. 
the Jags were the Jags in 2020 and a bit of a revolving door at times at QB. And then Trevor Lawrence in his rookie year maybe didn't play up to the full expectations some people would have had for him. I get it. He isn't living up to the potential of a second-round pick. But still, 1,200 yards in 30 games and five touchdowns, what you give up for him? Not a bad compensation to get in return. So put on Andrew Barry's hat right now and let me know if you would do the trade. T for trade or P for pass, would you want to trade for him? I think, I mean, I would, okay, I'd trade a future pick in a six-rounder to get LaVisca. I think that's about right, which sounds weird because Amari Cooper went for a fifth. So how is he a fifth and Chenault's a sixth? Well, you also took off a $20 million bar tab from the Cowboys when you made that trade. So that's why the Cowboys were not able to get a full return on, uh, you know, total like, value, we'll call it, for Amari Cooper. So I think a six in a future pick. That way you don't have to draft a wide receiver in round two, probably. You can go out and get someone like Travis Jones or Logan Hall, someone on the defensive side of things. We'll touch on more Browns news and rumors in just a second. But if you guys want to catch other Browns content on rumble.com slash Browns Report, it's another awesome up-and-coming video platform service. Help us out by following us because we crossed over 1,000 subscribers there. So thank you to everyone who's joined us already. And then help us catch up to the Chiefs. Let's get on the Raiders' tail. Let's get the Giants out of the dust. And let's get the Cowboys way, Cowboys, get the Cowgirls way behind us. Third segment of today's show is Jadeveon Clowney coming back to Cleveland. This has been a story that's, I don't want to say gone in circles lately, but it feels like it has. But we have some new-ish information. So CBS came out with a fun article where they predicted where the top 15 free agents would land. And they had Clowney going back to the Browns. Now, if you remember something I've mentioned before, Clowney didn't sign with Cleveland until April 14th last year. So here's a guy that has patience, doesn't mind waiting a little bit, like to see all the offers come in. He's enjoying, you know, the offseason, probably vacationing somewhere a lot warmer uh, down in Miami. I don't know. Now, I will say one of my, you know, tombstone uh, sort of texts would be Cleveland saved his career. He had nine sacks last year. The two seasons before that combined, he had three. If he went out and had another one and a half, two sack year, the guy would not be getting nearly as much money if he was going to get any contract at all if it wasn't for what he did for the Browns last season. And you got to think, it probably helped a little bit having Miles Garrett on the other side of the D-line. Now, I personally think Clowney will return. Before the Deshaun Watson trade went down, there was a report came out that the Browns offered him a two-year, $24 million contract. And we recently just revisited the fact that, um, the fact that Clowney... Um, that the Browns, I'm sorry, gave him that all that, uh, Deshaun Watson all that money. They probably can't do that for Clowney. So if you had to, let's say, I don't know, uh, only roll with one player. So Jarvis Landry or Clowney. I think whatever move they make there, like I kind of get my train of thought back together. If they had to pick one of those two, whichever one they roll with, then they can go, say, in free in the draft and get the other position. What I mean by that is if they re-sign Landry, then they can go in the draft, and they don't have to draft a wide receiver in the second round. They can go out and get an edge rusher, okay? Vice versa. If they go out and get Clowney, then in the draft, if Christian Watson or George Pickens, someone else is that exciting, is waiting for them with that 44th overall pick, they can jump on that. I think signing one of these two guys back makes it doable. So if you had to pick one to sign, who would it be? Landry or Clowney? Let me know which one of these two guys you'd like to see come back to Cleveland. I'm a little torn because I think Clowney, like my heart says Jarvis Landry. It's, it's, it's juice, right? But my brain says Clowney because I think he could impact the Browns in a better way in 2022. You need another edge rusher opposite of Garrett. Tack McKinley ruptures Achilles. There's no one else really out there unless you want to draft someone around two. Meanwhile, for Jarvis Landry, you could probably live without that. So you could roll with Amari Cooper, DPJ, Anthony Schwartz, and a rookie wide receiver that you don't even get in the second round. It could be later. It could be a day three guy. Wrapping up the show here, it is shout-out o'clock now on the Browns Report. So I put out a community post where I said, hey, 
First 10 people to comment will get on the show. So let's give some shout outs. And I also, I lied. I did more than 10. So Cam Bam, Miranda, JR Swish, Ethan, Liamo, Rick, Apocalypse, James Willison, Dre, Spec Cleveland, 389, uh, 3, yeah, 891, Lane Chicken, Kevin, Noah, All Hats, No Break. You are a loyal subscriber. Appreciate you, my guy. Keats, Nolan, Davison Taylor. Davison, I see you often in the comment section. Also appreciate you, along with Dr. Crew, Penny the Cat, the cat here. I'm a dog guy. And Browns fan 555. Thank you to everyone that commented. And if you ever want to get a shout out on a future so show, it's pretty simple. You just got to subscribe. That way you don't miss a video. That way you can get in the comment section. And that way you can be a part of the show because I dare you to find another Browns YouTube channel out there that's this interactive with the audience. They actually let you guys have a voice in the show. Be a part of the show. We do mailbags. We take your questions. We interact all the time. Find me someone else that does that. I'm waiting.